Hello, I'm Carla, and I'm going to tell you a little bit of my me my memories about sheep when I grew up. Um, and they mostly have to do with the little sheep. I remember the bigger ones, but mostly the little ones. And they mostly had to do with their tails or lack thereof. If you notice, sheep don't have a long tail. They were born with a long tail, but because of sanitation reasons and they would get caught in stuff, the farmers always had their tails taken off. And I think my dad did that by putting some kind of band around it, and it would just kind of die off. But sometimes in that process, it would get um, tetanus. The lamb would get tetanus, or as we know as lockjaw. And that's where my memories came into play. If they didn't get enough medicine or something, they would just get all stiff and could only lay down. And our job was to feed them milk out of a bottle, hope they get enough nourishment. And we had some successes. We had some little lambs that would live through that. So that's kind of um, interesting, I think, about the tails. Hello, I'm Tom Winkler, and my cousin Carla called me and, and asked if I would do um, a thing on sheep. Well, I've been around sheep most of my life. Uh, my grandparents live here on the, did live here on the farm, and uh, I was always around them. And in the early 80s, um, my dad got to a point where he didn't want to mess with baby lambs, and he said, here, take this home and bottle feed it. And if you can get it to live, you can keep it. So I did, and I was kind of the surrogate mom for all the lambs that dad couldn't take care of. And, and uh, I fed them and brought them back down to the farm. And I eventually decided I wanted to do more. And I had 32, 32 head of sheep here. Um, this is the barn that I'm in is where I did the lambing and the waiting area. I had it divided up and I had five pens and that was the birthing pens. And they would all be out there in the pasture in about December and I would bring them in on the feed floor here and put up removable doors in front of the barn and they had an entryway going in and out. and. I would have my pen set up, ready to go, and where I had two eight-foot feed bunks in the middle of the barn, and that was they were divided. I would put the sheep that were that I knew were going to lamb in a couple days on one side, and then the ones that are going to be farther along on the other side. But they both had access to the feed, and uh, I would come out here at night usually around 9, 10 o'clock, and sit out here with them so they would get used to me. So when it came time, if I needed to pull a lamb out because it was having trouble, the mother was having trouble, they would be used to me and they would just lay there and let me do what I needed to do to assist them. Because my favorite part of raising sheep is after the lambs are about a week old, and they run around and they hop and they skip and they just have a ball just playing around. That was my favorite part. Behind me is the gate that I had when my dad died in 2010. And I was out here putting hay in the hay bunk and my, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. And I thought, that's odd. And I turned around and my dad was standing here with his arms stretched out on that gate, just watching me. He had a red hat, blue sweatshirt, and he just watched me, and a couple seconds later, he was gone. And I feel very blessed and lucky that I had that vision. This morning I'm going to tell you the story of the bummer lamb. Every once in a while, a ewe will give birth to a lamb and reject it. There may be many reasons she does this. If the lamb, however, is returned to the ewe, the mother will push it away or even kick the poor baby away. Once a ewe rejects one of her lambs, she will never change her mind. These little lambs hang with their heads so low it looks like something wrong with their neck. 
its spirit is broken. These little lambs are called bummer lambs. Unless a shepherd intervenes, that lamb will die, rejected, and all alone. So do you know what the shepherd does? He takes that rejected little lamb into his home. He hand feeds it and keeps it warm by the fire. He will wrap it up in blankets and hold it to his chest so the bummer can hear his heartbeat. Once that little lamb is strong enough, the shepherd places it back in the field with the rest of the flock. But that sheep never forgets how the shepherd cared for him when his mother rejected him. When the shepherd calls for the flock, guess who runs to him first? That's right, the bummer sheep. The sheep knows his, his shepherd's voice immediately. It's not that the bummer lamb is loved more. It just knows intimately the one who loves it. It's not that it's loved more. It just believes it because it experienced that love one-on-one. -on -one. So many of us are like bummer lambs, rejected and broken. But Jesus is our good shepherd. He cares for our every need and holds us close to his heart so we can hear his heartbeat. We may be broken, but we are deeply loved by the shepherd. Okay, my name is Roger Hodge, and I just want to share my small knowledge I have about sheep. We've, I've had some experience with them, but not much, but I find that they are a type of animal that has to be shepherded or uh, controlled by somebody has to watch over them. They're not able to defend themselves much at all, and uh, when danger comes, they'll just run up in a corner, and whatever's after them can kill them all. They, de they de do not defend themselves at all. And I know one particular time a neighbor of ours had a flock of sheep, and every spring he would take them to another pasture. In between was he had to cross double track of railroad, and to get them across the sh road, across the track, he would just have to find the leader and drag it across, and then the rest of them would run right over the rail with not a bit of problem, but that leader had to go first. And uh, I know a funny thing Marilyn had with, we had a big buck sheep, big one, and one day she's sitting in our living room, we had low windows, and she felt like a presence. Somebody was watching her. She looked back over her shoulder and there was this big old buck sheep just eyeballing her in the house. <laughs> Scared her a little bit. Another story with this same buck sheep. He was laying in our yard one day and he must, he was so flat on the back, big, wide, fat sheep. He must have rolled over on his back and he became completely helpless. He could not get up off of the ground. So I had to grab a hold of a handful of wool and flip him back up on his feet again. So <laughs> get going. I grew up on a farm and as a farm girl, we raised corn and beans, but we also had livestock, farm animals. We had chickens and pigs and cows. And some years we had sheep. My sister's job and I were to take care of the little animals who weren't doing well. Sometimes a baby pig or a baby lamb just didn't do very well. So my dad would bring him to the house, in the house, we put them in a huge box in the kitchen, and my sister's job and mine were to feed those animals until they got healthy and they could go back out with their mamas. So my sister and I did this and my dad always said, girls, don't name these animals. They're not pets, they're livestock, they're farm animals. One year we had two little sheep, two little lambs, and they were so cute, and we had them for a long time. And we fed them with a big bottle with a nipple on it, and we shouldn't have, but we named them. My sister named hers Buttons, and I named mine Snipple Prince. We were really sad when they finally had to leave the house, but we were also excited because they got to go back out and join with their flock, the flock of sheep. They would still run up to us when we called their names, and we could pet them like dogs. They went back to their flock, and it made me think about how blessed we are to be in God's flock, for him to take care of us every day, like he, we did with the lambs.